Well, welcome back. Just gone quarter past eight here on Morning Live on SABC 2. It's so lovely to have you with us. I hope you're enjoying this extended edition of the program. Well, uh, let's talk about a story that has been uh, capturing the nation for now over 18 months. I'm talking about the Farnham Commission of Inquiry. It heard its final day of public hearings on Friday. Uh, how South Africa needs to develop a universally accepted notion of what constitutes appropriate forms of public protest. Such an understanding would be instrumental Mental in ensuring there was never a repeat of the events at Longman's platinum mining operations in Marikana. Well, here to shed some light on the matter, we joined in studio by SABC journalist Nozin Tomimir, who has been covering and following this story for the full 18 months. It's so good to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for having me, Ian. Uh, did you, as a journalist, on a, on a very different note, feel a sense of relief that it had all come to an end? It was actually, it was sad. Mm. Because we'd made friendships with all the different people. We'd made friendships with um, the miners who were involved in the strike. We'd made friendships with all the different legal parties. We'd made friendships with the widowers and a, a passing, glancing friendships with the commissioners. So yeah. it really felt like the last day of school before, before uh, summer holidays. So it was extremely sad. Very, very sad. Yeah. But um, I suppose a sense of relief that all these months uh, had gone by and we'd heard evidence and testimony, etc. But a sense of loss that we wouldn't really be seeing each other again yeah. anytime soon or in a particularly uh, another situation like that. Yeah. So. so, so that's the, I mean, that's the personal side of things because, you know, some people don't really uh, think about those relationships that you form during a commission like this, but it must've been a very emotional commission to follow. I mean, you talk about the widows and some of those widows, as much as the journalists were covering it in there every single day, you know, these widows sitting there listening to these stories, trying to find their own sense of closure um, that must have been very difficult for them as well. well. What I found very strange when I started with the to follow the commission, this was around June, July last year, was that there was this weird dichotomy between the widows, the, the group of widows of the 34 miners that were killed on the 16th and the group of widows of the other men who were killed in the days leading up to the 16th. And it was two clear camps. The commission itself, the auditorium, is sort of like a, a half, um, you know, like a horseshoe shape. Yeah. And on one side was the one group of widowers and on the other side was, was the other group of widows. So it was so strange that they wouldn't speak to each other. They wouldn't look at each other until you actually spoke to the two different camps and you found out that each blames the other for the death of, of, of their spouses, their brothers, their fathers, etc. So that was, that, was, that was so sad. That was really sad for me that, that instead of being joined in, 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 in sadness and tragedy, they were divided by the loss of their spouses, divided yeah. by the fact that the police and lawnmen were taking care of one group of widowers, of widows, and the other group was not being taken care of. So that was, that was really sad. Yeah, that was I can sad. imagine. That, that, can't, that can't be fun. But as I said in the introduction on, on, a, on another issue, and we, we talk about the husbands now who passed away during this, and forms of protest became uh, one, of the, one of the issues under discussion. And the Farlam Commission basically saying that they think we need to cons constitute what is appropriate forms of public protest. What is really at play here? That's, that's really a critical point. Yeah. We cannot, in our new South Africa, have protesters who will take up arms against um, the police, and the police represent the state. We cannot have protesters who are wielding machetes and bush knives and pangas, threatening to kill the police. At the end of the day, the police are merely uh, there to maintain law and order. They're not necessarily the people that the, that the protesters have an issue with. And that was the point that Judge Farlam was trying to make, that the evidence leaders were trying to make, that the police lawyers were trying to make, that we cannot be having a society, cannot be right, it cannot be normal in our society that public protests, whether it's, it's over um, a labor dispute, whether it's over service delivery issues, we cannot be having a group of people who are protesting wielding arms. That yeah. cannot happen yeah. in a democratic South Africa. Yeah, and that's, that, that was a point that was pushed 
across very, very um, uh, strictly by the Farlam Commission. But, but having said that, what other options do the miners have when they want their voices to be heard and they feel that nobody is listening to us right now? And eventually resorting to violence, which led to the lives of so many being lost, is perhaps their only voice that's left. You remember there were so many factors that played in in that time. There was the Impala strike that had happened months earlier in 2012. And we saw the miners moving away from the NUM and moving towards this newly formed party called AMKU yes. and wanting to get what the Impala miners had gotten. They'd gone on a six months uh, uh, unprotected strike that had basically shut down Impala. It had shut down production at Impala yeah. and they wanted to emulate it. But Lonmin, the employer, wasn't playing ball. And it, it, it exacerbated a situation that was already tense and made the miners even more violent and more angry. Had Lonmen spoken to the miners and negotiated with them, as opposed to not negotiating with them, we would have seen a different outcome. Yeah. And this, this answers your question about what uh, recourse the miners have. When people are protesting over a lack of services or money or whatever, it's the responsibility of the employer, of the state, of government departments to negotiate and listen to people. Because if, if, if the protesters are not listened to, we will find ourselves in an even worse off situation. Because there are very few uh, options that are available to people who are protesting about something that has you know, bothered them for, for months and months and months and months. There yeah. are very few, op uh, you know, opportunities that are open. They can go through the correct legal channels, which most of them don't have the money to go to court. They can take to the streets and protest, uh, as peaceful a protest as possible. But it really does depend on the employer, on the state, to speak to the people who are protesting, to say, enough is enough. We don't want to see our country go up in flames. Yeah. We're going to speak to you. And the minute you, what um, one of the one of, one of the witnesses at the commission, uh, Gary White, said he's one of the negotiators, an international negotiator. He said the minute you stop speaking, the minute you stop negotiating, that's when it leads to violence and death. Sure. Finally, wrap us up for us. Where to from here? What happens? How long are we are we are we going to wait until this this um, uh, resolution and the, the outcomes are, or the findings of the commission are announced? The short question is that we are waiting till the end of March okay. to get the recommendations from the Phylum Commission. But it's such an exciting time because we are waiting in anticipation to hear what exactly the recommendations are going to be from the Phylum Commission. There are so many untruths and half-truths that came out from all sides, from the police, from the miners, from lawnmen, from all the different parties who gave evidence. Will the commissioners be able to wade through all the half-truths, the untruths, to get to the truth of really what happened from the 10th of August 2012 to the 16th? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be waiting and we'll see if, if, if this changes the course of the way things are handled going forward. But I think that really is the mandate of the commission to find these solutions to not lose any more lives so tragically. Definitely, uh, yeah. definitely. We need to stop having Indeed. such protests. Thank you for joining us. Uh, well done for covering the story so well for the SABC. Nazin Tommy Mir is the SABC journalist who, who covered that Farnham Commission of Inquiry um, where it was going on for 18 months and uh, as you heard in March, at the end of March next year, we should find out the findings of this commission. Thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you for having me.